This guide explains all of the actions the scholar learns from level 51 to 90 in order, both explaining what they do and effective ways to use them, including how to efficiently combine them with other actions. In the final summary at level 90, we go over an optimized combat opener and rotation, as well as lots of healing strategies and advice. I will assume you know the basics of the job, and if that is not the case, refer to my scholar's starter guide to get caught up. I also assume you are acquainted with common abbreviations such as JCD, OGCD and Weaving, and refer to these two shorts on the subject if you need a refresher. Now then, at level 52, you learn the ability Indomitability, an ether flow spender that heals in an AoE around you. It is more effective than Lost Rate if at least two players benefit from it, but keep in mind that it has a 30 second cooldown, so there may be reason to hold on to it if you know there is a better opportunity coming up in a moment. I recommend prioritizing Whispering Dawn over Indomitability for AoE healing, assuming you don't need to heal everyone quickly, as Indomitability comes at the cost of a resource, whereas Whispering Dawn does not. At level 54, Ruin 1 is permanently upgraded to Broil 1, and the potencies of Ruin 2 and Art of War are also boosted slightly. This means that on single target, you now should use Broil, but on two or more targets, you should use Art of War. Take note that Ruin 2 is significantly more inferior to Broil than it was to Ruin 1, so while Ruin 2 can easily be used to keep up the attack on the move, moving strategically between spell casts while using Broil is far superior. At level 56, you learn the ability Deployment Tactics, which copies your Galvanize effects on your target to other party members near them. Note that both at Locurium and Soccer applies the Galvanize effect, so you could spread a Soccer shield from a surviving shield, or the recommended method, spread an Adlocurium shield from one player to the entire party. The second shield from Critical Adlocurium is called Catalyze, and so is not spread by Deployment Tactics. A convenient time to use Deployment Tactics is just before pulling a boss. Use Adlocurium on the tank and spread the shield to everyone else. Using the initial shield on the tank is recommended because if it is a critical heal, then the second shield is much more likely to benefit a tank than anyone else. Sometimes you can go a long time without using this action due to its complex nature, and that is okay. At level 58, you learn the ability Emergency Tactics. If you need to heal your party a significant amount, but you know that shields will go to waste or simply not help, whether because damage is not incoming or because the party already has shields, then using emergency tactics will replace the shields from your next act locurium or soccer with more healing, vastly increasing their healing potential. As the name suggests, this ability should be used for emergencies, and so it is not odd if you go for a long time without using it at all. At level 60, you learn the ability Dissipation, which removes your pet for 30 seconds, but also maxes out your ether flow stacks and increases your healing magic potency by 20% for the duration. Remember that healing magic potency only affects spells, meaning at Locurium, Soccer and Physic, so while the boost sounds incredibly powerful, it is very limited in its usefulness. For this reason, the primary value in this ability is the ether flow generation, and as the use of dissipation removes your pet for 30 seconds, this means you are losing out on 10 embraces. Given that pets do slightly less damage and healing than players, this equates to around 1500 potency. There are three key scenarios where dissipation can be useful. Since ether flows can be spent for damage on energy drain, and doing so can be a damage output gain, this is an option. Just keep in mind that this strategy comes with a tremendous loss of potential healing, and if doing this will force you to cast a single healing spell later in the fight, then all the value gained from using this strategy is lost. If your party or your tank is about to die and you have no other way to save them except ether flow actions, you can use dissipation for this. Just keep in mind that now that your pet's passive healing is gone for a while, you will need to be doing the heavy lifting yourself on that front too just before the fight ends in a dungeon context, or just before a longer segment of downtime in a boss fight, use dissipation to acquire the free ether flows. You can even use adlocurium and deployment tactics to make use of the healing bonus. Keep in mind dissipation cannot be used unless you are in combat, hence why it has to be used before the fight ends. At level 62, you learn the ability Excogitation, an ether flow spender that applies a trap buff to the target. When the target drops below half HP, or the buff runs out, which happens to be equal to its cooldown, the buff applies a massive heal to the target. Unless you expect the tank to take practically no damage at all, you should almost always apply this to the tank on cooldown. Make sure to play around it, you don't have to worry nearly as much about keeping the tank healthy while this buff holds, although keep in mind that if someone dies straight from over 50% to zero, then excogitation will not help them. 
In a raid context, it may be beneficial to use Excogitation in anticipation of a tank buster to ease the recovery afterwards. At level 64, Broil is upgraded to Broil 2, and Rune 2's potency is slightly increased, which makes Rune 2 better than Art of War on single target. At level 66, you learn the ability Chain Stratagem, which is a raid cooldown that you apply to one enemy that improves the critical hit chance of everyone attacking the target. You should make use of this ability as close to on cooldown as you can. Apply it to the healthiest target in a pack of enemies, or use it on a boss. Keep in mind that if there is another scholar present, this effect will not stack, so try to avoid using it at the same time. In a boss fight, it may be worth considering if the boss is about to become unattackable for a while, in which case it may be better to save this cooldown for after they return. At level 70, you learn the ability Aether Pact and unlock the Fairy Gauge. Whenever you use an Aether Flow spending action while in combat and your pet is present, you gain 10 Fairy Gauge. Using Aether Pact causes your pet to channel a beam that heals for twice as much as Embrace every 3 seconds, at the cost of 10 Fairy Gauge each tick. While Aether Pact has a massive range, it is worth keeping in mind that if your target manages to get out of range during the channel, your pet will not move into range, and will instead simply wait for them to get back in range, unless you cancel it. Running out of Fairy Gauge or using Aether Pact again while it is channeling will cancel the effect. A big benefit of Aether Pact is that as you are choosing who it is channeling on, you can use it to command your pet to heal someone in particular, often the tank. One way to make sure you don't sit at max is to aggressively spend down to 70 whenever you gain Aether Flow, so you're guaranteed to be able to hold the gauge produced by the Aether Flow you currently have. I also recommend prioritizing Aether Pact for healing over using your Aether Flow actions, since it does not come at the cost of a resource you could use on other things. At level 72, Broil 2 and Bio 2 are upgraded to Broil 3 and Biolysis respectively, and Rin 2 gains yet another potency boost. The notable change this causes is that Biolysis is better than Art of War on up to 4 targets, and so I recommend that in a dungeon context, while the tank is pulling, you should apply Biolysis to as many enemies as you can while they're being collected, and then using Art of War. For single target, these upgrades change nothing. At level 74, you learn the ability Recitation, which causes your next Adlocurium, Soccer, Indomitability or Excogitation to both cost nothing and also guarantees that it will be a critical healing effect. Excogitation and Indomitability still produce Fairy Gauge despite not costing Aether Flow. With so many ways to use it, let me go over each of them. Recitation Excogitation is a reliable way to use the cooldown, as it lines up with every second use of Excogitation, and you usually will be using Excogitation anyway, maximizing the value of both. A critical Excogitation usually completely tops up a tank's HP bar from half, so this makes it very safe to be aggressive in combat. If you need to recover your party after a large amount of damage, then Recitation Indomitability is absolutely your best option. This is typically only really available in a raid context, since in dungeons you're more likely to have already used Recitation on Excogitation. Recitation at Locurium followed by deployment tactics can give your party a reliable and massive shield. This can be good to use on pool or when anticipating a massive raid-wide attack. If you're using this on pool, you could also just fish for a crit before pulling if your raid needs the large shield. You should never use Recitation Soccer, as it is inferior to all the three other options. Due to the power of Recitation, I highly recommend you try your best to find a use for it on cooldown, even if it is to use Excogitation on the tank. Only sit on it if you know you will need it for something specific really soon. Note that you can weave Recitation and Excogitation, for example, with other spells and abilities between them, as long as these are not other actions that can spend Recitation. At level 76, you learn the ability Fey Blessing, which causes instant AoE healing around your pet. I recommend using this, just like Whispering Dawn, before resorting to your Aether Flow actions. The healing is also potent enough that if the tank needs healing on a large pool, it is still worth using considering the short cooldown. At level 78, your Sacred Soil is upgraded to also apply a heal over time for its duration. This healing alone makes Sacred Soil stronger than Indomitability in raw healing and nearly as strong as Lustrate, and that's while ignoring the damage reduction it also applies. If your group is going to stay in it, Sacred Soil should be used as close to on cooldown as possible, of course, only if players are going to benefit from the healing or damage reduction. Sacred Soil is also considered far superior to Lustrate even if just a single target benefits. At level 80, you learn the ability Summon Seraph, which temporarily replaces your pet with Seraph. Be aware that if you requested your pet to use any abilities before this, and they have not been performed yet, these will be lost, and you will not be refunded the cooldown. This is commonly known as ghosting. 
It should be noted that this also happens if you use Dissipation. Seraph uses a superior version of Embrace called Seraphic Veil that applies a shield on top of the regular healing, shielding for the same amount. You also learn the ability Consolation, which replaces the Summon Seraph action while it is present. Consolation can be used twice and heals everyone in an AoE while also applying a shield for the same amount. I recommend using Consolation near the start of the cooldown and again near the end to maximize the value of the shields. Alternatively, if you summon Seraph to specifically heal the tank, you can use Consolation when the first shield drops from the tank. While the Seraph is on the field, though Whispering Dawn and Fey Illumination are still accessible, they will simply waste the Seraph's time using regular fairy actions, and I recommend you either use these before summoning Seraph, or wait until after the Seraph leaves. Summon Seraph seems like a huge cooldown that should be used only for the most desperate moments, but in reality, the cooldown is a relatively short 2 minutes for its incredible potential, so try to make regular use of it. At level 82, Broil 3 and Art of War upgrade to Broil 4 and Art of War 2, respectively, and Ruin 2 gets another potency boost. This does not change anything for your rotation. At level 85, Physic, Embrace and Seraphic Veil get a small potency boost, with the pet action boosts being significantly more impactful. Additionally, Adlocurium and Soccer get a massive boost to the shield they apply. Note that Adlocurium gets twice the value when it crits. Despite all of this, this does not change how you use any of these actions. At level 86, you learn the ability Protraction, which both heals your target, increases their max HP, and causes them to receive more healing from all actions for 10 seconds. Two particularly useful ways to apply this ability is to use it before Excogitation or Adlocurium. Adlocurium will of course result in a 10% bigger shield, and Excogitation will benefit from the healing bonus due to the concept known as snapshotting. Note that if you use Protraction after Excogitation, but Excogitation's healing activates during Protraction, Excogitation will not benefit from the healing bonus for this very same reason. At level 88, Deployment Tactics cooldown is reduced. The main useful change here is that now the cooldown lines up naturally with Recitation, in case you would like to use it with Adlocurium. At level 90, you learn the ability Expedient, which reduces the damage taken by everyone in your party, stacking with Sacred Soil. It also applies a speed boost equivalent to Sprint to everyone. In a dungeon context, this ability can be incredibly useful while your tank is pulling, or if someone is far out of position. In raids, this ability can be very helpful for dealing with mechanics with a lot of movement, but it will never be mandatory to use, since no other healer can offer anything similar. To round off, let's first talk about an opener for boss fights, followed by more general healing tips and advice to make the most of your tools in dungeons and raids, and finally, briefly touch on stat priorities. Let's begin. Note that using Aether Flows for damage in the opener is optional, and that you should only do this if you're absolutely certain you will not need it for healing. This also applies for Dissipation. In most situations, I recommend skipping Energy Drains and Dissipation in the opener. However, I will include them in this demonstration nonetheless. If you intend to use a Tincture, a so-called Burst Potion, use it 3 seconds before pull, and then 1.5 seconds before combat starts, start casting Broil, and then cast Biolysis, weaving Aether Flow. Then cast Broil twice, and then weave Chain Stratagem. Then, 3 times in a row, cast Broil and weave Energy Drain. Then cast Broil and Weave Dissipation, and then three more times cast Broil and Weave Energy Drain. You can also flip the order of Dissipation and Aether Flow if having your pet sooner after the opener is important. For dungeon pulls, use Biolysis on up to four targets, and spread it while the tank is pulling. Use Art of War over Broil when there are at least two targets. Remember to make use of Chain Stratagem every two minutes, especially in boss fights to maximize the damage of your party. While Dissipation can be used for some extra damage every three minutes, the potential danger in doing so due to the loss of healing means that I recommend you only do so if you are absolutely sure it is safe. Now, for the healing tips section, let's start with dungeon pull advice. Before the pull starts, apply Adlocurium to the tank and then use Recitation. You can use Swiftcast to apply Adlocurium if the tank is running away from you. Once you are in combat, spend Recitation on x Cogitation and use Aether Flow as quickly as you can. You can also use Protraction before both of these to boost both the shield and x Cogitation by 10%. If the tank needs more healing while pulling, your best option is Lustrate. Remember that Expedient can help the tank to pull faster if their sprint runs out. When the tank reaches their destination, place down Sacred Soil to cover the area, and make use of your pet actions alongside Excogitation and Sacred Soil to keep the tank alive. In a 3 minute window, you have 11 Aether Flow from Aether Flow and Recitation combined, and using Excogitation and Sacred Soil on cooldown will spend 10 of these. 
While generally you won't use both precisely on cooldown, the important detail is that you don't have either flow to spare to cast unnecessary lost traits. While expectation still holds on the tank, you can safely rely on just pet actions to keep them alive without worry. Remember Aether Pact and Fey Blessing. If all other options run out, use Summon Seraph as the final bastion. At such a point, you may also need to assist healing with spells instead of just spamming out of war. In such a scenario, make sure to alternate between Adlocurium and Physics so that you get the full value out of each shield. You can also use Adlocurium, Emergency Tactics Adlocurium, and then Adlocurium again. For raids and dungeon bosses, it is a lot more complicated, and the simplest answer is to make sure to use your toolkit efficiently to deal with each mechanic. If a tank is taking a lot of regular damage, using Excogitation on cooldown is wise. However, saving Recitation for Indomitability can also be beneficial if you're anticipating large amounts of AoE damage. As Indomitability gains more value from Recitation than Excogitation if at least 3 players benefit from the full healing. If you can, try to play Sacred Soil to cover as much of the raid as possible to maximize the healing and damage reduction. For tank busters, your best bet is to assist with protraction. If you don't have to, you shouldn't bother applying Adlocurium. And remember, the more efficiently you make use of your pet cooldowns, the less you need to use your Aether Flow for healing. And that means you can use the excess that you won't need for energy drain, boosting your damage and killing the boss slightly faster. As raid bosses follow a set pattern, it is often beneficial to plan your cooldowns ahead of time on very hard fights, so you have enough cooldowns for each mechanic. This means that instead of saving things like Summon Seraph as a last resort, you plan it for a particularly difficult mechanic. Finally, regarding stat priorities, take note that in nearly every single case, item level beats out optimal secondary stats. This means you should always prioritize gear with higher item level, as long as it has mind on it. After that, Scholar's stat priority is critical hit, then enough spell speed, then direct hit and finally determination. What is meant by enough spell speed is that items with critical hit and spell speed on them are all good, but if you're going to meld materia, I recommend only melding spell speed if a single materia will reduce your GCD by 0.01. While direct hit does not actually boost your healing output, and determination does, the fact that healers never find direct hit on their gear naturally means that melding direct hit materia will be better for increasing your damage output, and the healing bonus determination does grant is not enough to affect your actual approach to combat at all. You will still cast the same amount of healing spells in most situations. Finally, Piety is a stat that increases healer's passive MP regeneration in combat. However, it does not provide anything else, so if you don't run out of MP while using your tools like Aetherflow and Lucid Dreaming, then any excess Piety you have on your gear is worthless. As such, while piety can sometimes be necessary to meet the MP demands of an encounter, Scholar is capable of functioning without it, so you should only go out of your way to get extra piety if you know you need it. Additionally, keep in mind that spell speed directly increases the amount of MP you will use in a fight, so this can also be a factor in your decision to get piety. Unfortunately, this is a more subjective stat, and so you have to make this decision for yourself. Now, that is all for this video, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, when the new actions introduced in Endwalker were initially revealed, Scholar being offered a speed boost as their final action was met with a lot of negative feedback, given that all the other healers got incredibly flashy healing options. Ironically, the speed boost is the most mechanically impactful of the level 90 actions of the healers, so much so that its duration was cut in half at some point. And in retrospect, it's probably the coolest of them, at least if you ask anyone who isn't a healer.